Welcome to this video. Today we will discuss plane wave propagation in a lossy dielectric. A lossy dielectric is uh, defined as a medium in which an electromagnetic wave will lose power as it propagates in that medium along that medium. This uh, this loss of energy or power is due to poor conduction. Whereas in a perfect dielectric or an ideal uh, dielectric, when an electromagnetic wave propagates through an ideal dielectric, it will not lose any power. Okay. So this uh, loss of power is due to poor conduction. So there is some conductivity for this dielectric. For an ideal dielectric, we know that it will not conduct at all and sigma will be zero for ideal dielectric. There is no conductivity for ideal dielectric. Whereas in low C dielectric, there will be some conductivity. So sigma will be a non-zero value. Uh, so sigma is not equal to zero is the mathematical condition for low C dielectric. And one point to remember is that you cannot have any value for sigma other than zero. There is a restriction. Sigma cannot be a large, very large number because if sigma is very large, then the material will become a good conductor. So low C dielectric is actually an imperfect dielectric as well as a bad conductor. It is uh, not a good conductor. It is partially conducting and uh, at the same time it is not a very good dielectric. Uh, it is an imperfect one, imperfect dielectric. So this is the condition. Sigma not equal to zero. So now we will, uh, the starting point for this analysis is the phasor form of wave equations. This we have already studied. So there are two equations, one corresponding to the E field and the and a second one corresponding to the H field. So the standard form of wave equations in phasor representation is written here. Del square ES is equal to gamma square ES and del square HS is equal to gamma square HS. Where ES and HS are phasor representations of E field and H field. This uh, S subscript S denotes phasor form. And uh, there is a constant gamma square. Uh, gam gamma is defined as the propagation constant of the medium. Propagation constant. So there is an expression for uh, gamma square. So that I have written here in equation 1. So gamma square is given by this equation. J omega mu multiplied by sigma plus J omega epsilon. So there are many parameters uh, appearing in this expression. Omega is the frequency of operation, angular frequency of operation. Mu is the permeability of the medium. And sigma is the conductivity of the medium. We have already seen that sigma is non-zero. So some small value will be appearing here. Then again omega is angular frequency and epsilon is the permittivity of the medium. So if you know the parameters of the medium like sigma, mu and epsilon and the frequency of operation omega you can calculate gamma square and square root of this will give you the propagation constant of the medium and it is obvious that this will be a complex number so a complex number can be written as a real part plus j multiplied by imaginary part as in equation 2 so this real part of propagation constant has a specific name it is known as attenuation constant attenuation constant and uh, the unit of alpha is nepper per meter okay where, where one nepper responds to 8.686 decibel and beta has a units of radians per meter beta is the phase constant of the medium phase constant and uh, so this propagation constant itself is constituted by two other constants alpha and beta now let us uh, try to get uh, the two separate equations for alpha and beta. So we will consider this gamma square. Gamma square is alpha plus j beta the whole square. Uh, it is written here. So if you uh, take the square of alpha plus j beta, you will get alpha square minus beta square plus j into 2 alpha beta. Okay, so there is a real part for gamma square and an imaginary part for gamma square. And if you look at equation 1, gamma square is already j omega mu into sigma plus j omega epsilon. So I can 
open this bracket and it can be written as j omega mu into sigma multiplied minus j into j omega mu into j omega epsilon so it will be minus 1 j square is minus 1 omega square mu epsilon i have just opened this bracket and multiplied the terms so there is a imaginary part and there is a real part so for gamma square we have now two expressions and we can equate the real and imaginary parts so if you equate the real parts real parts uh, real part of the first equation gamma square is minus omega square mu epsilon and the real part of uh, gamma square is also equal to alpha square minus beta square so we can equate these two alpha square minus beta square is minus omega square mu epsilon or it can be written like this in as in equation 3 similarly we need one more expression to solve now we have one equation one more equation is needed to solve since we have two unknowns beta and alpha so we know gamma square is j omega mu multiplied by sigma plus j omega epsilon so what is the magnitude of gamma square magnitude of gamma square will be omega into mu multiplied by magnitude of j omega mu is omega into mu magnitude of sigma plus j omega epsilon is square root of sigma square plus omega epsilon square and gamma square is also equal to alpha square minus beta square plus j into 2 alpha beta and if you check the magnitude of that you will get it as alpha square plus beta square so we have now two equations for magnitude of gamma square and we can equate these two so we will get one more equation in alpha square and beta square so we got that one more equation so we have now two equations for alpha square and beta square now we can add and subtract these two equations to get the values of alpha and beta so that you can uh, do uh, i have simplified it and I, the final answer is written here so alpha will be equal to omega multiplied by square root of mu epsilon by 2 into square root of 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon the whole square minus 1 so here uh, you have to be careful only this term these two terms 1 and sigma 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon square is under the square root this minus 1 is outside the square root. okay here also expression is similar only difference is here you have plus sign in beta and here you have minus sign in alpha okay that is the only difference otherwise the equation uh, looks similar so now we have we know the two parameters of wave propagation alpha and beta and let us try to solve the wave equation so in order to solve the equation we will bring in an assumption so here we will assume that the wave is propagating along the z axis the e field we are considering the electric field wave e field if the e, e field is propagating along the z axis and the amplitude of e field is varying along the x axis suppose this is x axis and this is z axis then it uh, this diagram shows that the wave is propagating along the z axis whereas the amplitude of e field is oscillating or varying in the x axis direction okay so es has only x component and it is propagating along the positive z axis so if you use these assumptions the es uh, vector can be simplified as this e x is of a z e x subscript x indicates amplitude is varying along the x axis and this z uh, indicates that it is function of z only we are this way it is propagating in space in the z direction so it is function of z and the uh, direction of this vector is ax because e field is uh, oscillating in the direction of x axis so es is equal to i will uh, rewrite it once again es is the phasor representation of e field since it is oscillating it is propagating along the z axis it is only a function of z space you need to consider only the z space variable and this particular e field is oscillate the amplitude is oscillating along the x-axis so it is uh, the direction of e field is ax now this was our wave equation del square es is equal to gamma square es here you so instead of es you, you can substitute 
or e axis of is z that is our e field e axis of z and here you can see that space variable is only z there is no x and y appearing here so this bell square operator will simplify to a second order differential operator with respect to z because in, in del square you have d square by dx square d square by dy square and d square by dz square terms in the del square operator but here we have already assumed that the wave is propagating only along the z axis so these two will vanish there is no point in taking derivative along the other two directions so these two terms will not be there only d square by dz square will come so this simplifies to uh, the equation written here okay on the right hand side there is no change now the, our problem is reduced to solution of a differential equation so this particular differential equation can be solved and the general solution is written in the next page so this is the general solution of this differential equation so i am not going into the how to get the solution of differential equation that you might have already studied in the mathematics classes so if you solve this differential equation you will get this solution this is uh, if you know how to solve a differential equation using complementary function and particular integral you will be able to do this this is actually a homogeneous equation and there is no particular integral only you need to solve the complementary function so if you solve that you will get this so this is the general solution general solution of the above differential equation so you have two terms one is having e raised to minus gamma is a term and the other uh, second part is having e raised to plus gamma is a term so from the basics of wave theory we know that e raised to minus gamma is a is actually the forward traveling wave and e raised to plus gamma is a corresponds to the backward traveling wave and we have already assumed that the wave is propagating along the z axis or uh, you are assuming that the wave is propagating along the z axis positive z axis so there is no need of considering any backward propagating wave so we can neglect this we can discard this term so our solution will be ESX of z will be e0 e raised to minus gamma z only the forward wave is considered now this is in phasor form but we need the solution in time domain so the final solution e of z comma t will be from our phasor representation basics we know it is real part of e x s of z into e raised to j omega t a x and i have plugged in the value of e x s of z here and the gamma is replaced by alpha plus j beta in the next step and if you rearrange and combine the uh, j beta and j omega t expansions you will get the equation like this now if you take the real part of this e0 e raised to minus alpha z and ax we can take out of this bracket and what is the real part of e raised to j theta it is cos theta so e raised to j omega t minus beta z will be uh, will become cos omega t minus beta z okay. so this is our final expression so the final solution for the electric field wave is e of z t is equal to e0 e raised to minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta is a dx so if you carefully observe this expression you can see there is a peak value for the wave e0 and uh, in the trigonometric function you have a time variable and a space variable so omega t and beta is it and the space variable uh, uh, indicates the direction of propagation if you are having minus beta is it here it it may you have to understand that it the wave will be propagating along the positive z direction suppose you have something like this e0 e raised to minus alpha x cos omega t minus beta x ay if you have something like this it clearly shows your uh, direction of wave propagation is positive x okay positive wave is propagating along the positive x direction so looking at the argument of this trigonometric function you can identify the direction of propagation and the e field direction of e field not direction of propagation the direction of e field vector is this one this ax okay 
so similar analysis you can do for the H field also. So you, in, if you do the similar analysis for H field, you will get H of Z is equal to H zero into V raised to minus alpha is an cos of omega t minus beta is an. And instead of A x in E field, you had A x. So here you will have A y. So here also you can see an important relationship. We assumed that the direction of propagation was A z. Then the direction of E field we have assumed that it is AX. Then direction of H field will be AY. They will always at, uh, appear in, in an orthogonal form. In this direction of E field is uh, say AE. And direction of H field is suppose AH. And direction of propagation is AK. Then they will always satisfy this relationship. AE cross AH will be equal to AK. So if you know the direction of electric field and if you know the direction of magnetic field intensity then you just take the cross product you will get the direction of propagation. So this is the direction of propagation, this is the direction of H, this is the direction of E. Okay. So this will be useful when we are doing problems. So that is uh, regarding the a derivation of uh, electric field and magnetic field intensity uh, wave equation wave representations in low C dielectric now one more quantity we have to define that is intrinsic impedance intrinsic impedance of the medium is defined as the ratio of forward traveling Amplitude of the forward traveling electric field to the amplitude of the forward traveling magnetic field. So E0 by H0. That ratio gives you eta. Okay. And uh, this can be shown to be equal to J square root of J omega mu divided by sigma plus J omega epsilon. This derivation is not needed. You just need to remember this expression for eta. Intrinsic impedance is given by square root of j omega mu divided by sigma plus j omega epsilon. And here also you can see that it is a complex number. So eta can be written as magnitude of eta and angle of eta. Okay, since it is a complex number, it will have a magnitude and an angle. And this angle is related to the parameters of the medium in a using this equation to tan 2 theta eta is equal to sigma by omega epsilon okay this is another useful relation for low C dielectric tan 2 theta eta is equal to sigma by omega epsilon okay that is about the plane wave propagation in low C dielectric we will continue the uh, calculation of uh, for a lossless and a good conductor in another video. Thank you.